What about a change in temperature? Well, a change in temperature affects Keq because Keq is only a constant at a given temperature. Now, the Van Hoff equation, okay, from chemical thermodynamics, you can show that the dependence of the equilibrium constant on temperature is given by what's called the Van Hoff equation. It says natural log of Keq would be negative delta H over R times 1 over T plus C. So this is one of the connections between heat measurements and equilibrium. The equilibrium constant actually depends on the delta H, okay? So you have seen a similar equation to this earlier when we talked about the clausius clapeyron equation, right, and the Arrhenius equation. Basically, what does this thing say? If I were to plot this on my y-axis, and I were to plot 1 over t on my x-axis, what would be my slope? This right here, negative delta h over r is going to be my slope, right? And c is going to be my y-intercept y equals mf plus b, right? So if I were to plot that, what would we, what would I get? Well, two possibilities. Natural log of Keq versus 1 over t. It's either I get a graph that looks like this, okay? Or I get a graph calling Keq versus 1 over t. It looks like this. This is a positive slope and a negative slope. Ah, oh, I got it wrong. I gotta switch. This is a negative slope and this is a positive slope, right? And what's the slope equal to? This negative of delta H over R. Okay? So, all right, you remember which side of my x-axis is low temperature and which side is high? If temperature is high, what's my value of 1 over t? Smaller. So high temperature is on this side, right? And low temperature is on this side. Okay? And so high temperature over here low temperature on this other side. Let's take a look at this case where you have a negative slope. So you say slope is equal to negative delta H over R. So what's our delta H then? Delta H is equal to R, negative R times the slope. So what's negative R times a negative number? You have a negative times a negative slope. Negative R times a negative slope will give you positive delta H. So we say that if, if the graph looks like this, our reaction is endothermic. Similarly, if a graph looks like this, our reaction is exothermic. Delta H here will be negative. Okay? So, is that consistent with Le Chatelier's principle? Well, let's see. Uh, endothermic means it's favored at high temp or low temp. KEQ is larger at high temp, right? So this one right here, we say for this case, KEQ is larger at higher temperature. In other words, the products are favored at high temperature. Why is products favored at high temperature for an endothermic reaction? What does an endothermic reaction mean? If you have reactants going to product, endothermic means what? Heat is absorbed or released? Okay, so heat, you can think of heat as a reactant in an endothermic reaction. Okay, so what if I were to raise the temperature of my reaction mixture. What am I essentially doing? I'm putting in more heat, right? So which way will the reaction try to do what, what which way will the reaction try to shift? The opposite of adding heat is removing heat so the reaction shifts to the right. So that favors the endothermic reaction. Okay? So similarly if you have an exothermic reaction, what would you have? Reactant gives you products plus heat, right? If I were to increase the temperature, what will happen? 
it will favor the reverse reaction. Okay? So think of it this way. Uh, endothermic reactions are really, the way you write it, you call to classify it as endothermic or exothermic depending on how you write it. You're actually, when you say it's endothermic, you're actually referring to the forward reaction because since the reaction is reversible, if it absorbs heat one way, if it goes the opposite way, it must release heat, right? So we say a re an endothermic reaction is one where the forward reaction is endothermic. So forward is endothermic. The reverse, in fact, is exothermic. That's another way of looking at it. So if you have an endothermic reaction, the forward reaction is endothermic. That's favored by high temperature. Whereas if you have an exothermic reaction, okay, reactant gives you products plus heat, okay, then the reverse reaction is endothermic. So we say the forward is exothermic, then the reverse is endothermic, okay? So heating favors the endothermic direction. So let's look at these questions then. Uh, if you have this reaction, fictitious, fictitious reaction, is this exothermic or endothermic? Heat's on the reactant side. So that means it's endothermic, right? It's endothermic going forward, it's exothermic going in reverse, okay? So if a mixture of A and B is at equilibrium, what would happen if the temperature is raised? Well, when the equilibrium is reestablished, A would be what? Which way, which way will it shift? Shift to the right. So A would be lower or higher? If it shifts to the right, lower, and B would be higher, and the new KEQ will be higher. Okay? Let's look at this one. Is this exothermic or endothermic? Delta H is negative. This is exothermic, right? So you have heat on the product side. Suppose A is yellow and B is blue, and a mixture of A and B is green. What happens if you increase the temperature? Which way will it shift? It will shift to the left, okay? So what happens? So the color of the solution will be what? More yellowish or more bluish? A is yellow, so it's going to be more yellowish, right? And the KEQ will be higher or lower? More, more reactants? What happens to KEQ? Lower. Okay, let's take a look at one last question. Uh, consider the vaporization of water. And let's imagine you have a sample of water in an enclosed container at equilibrium, okay? What would happen if the temperature is raised? So you've got liquid water and gaseous water. The vapor pressure of water will blank and the new KEQ will blank, will be blank. What's the correct answer here? Well, let's see. Uh, liquid to gas, that's an endothermic process, right? So that is favored at high temperature, according to Le Chatelier's principle. So you would expect that water vapor, the gaseous side, product side in this balance, in this balance equation, will be favored at higher temperature. So the vapor pressure of water will be higher. It will increase. Okay, so it's not this. There will be a net shift in the forward direction. And the new KEQ is going to be, well, what's our KEQ here? You can think of it as partial pressure of water in the numerator and mole fraction of water, liquid water in the denominator. And, or you can say this is essentially equal to one, okay? Well, it is one since you're dealing with pure water. 
and so your vapor pressure is going to increase. So the equilibrium constant is really nothing more than the, the, the vapor pressure of water is really nothing more than an equilibrium constant for this reaction. And that is why the Van Hoff equation for this, okay, L and K EQ is equal to minus delta H over R, one over T plus a constant is essentially the same as the clausius clapeyron equation, which is ln of P, the vapor pressure is equal to minus delta H vaporization over R minus 1 over T, let's see. The delta H vaporization is a delta H for this so-called reaction. Okay, if you can think of this as a reaction, okay, then the delta H for this reaction, in quotes, would be the delta H for the vaporization of water. 